Well, on today's episode of the Home Service Toolbox, we are joined by Lachelle Lates of the Better Business Bureau. The BBB is here to help consumers find and work with businesses that they can trust. And today we're going to learn a little bit more about the BBB, what they do, and specifically how business owners and consumers can navigate the constant changes we're facing during the COVID-19 outbreak. So stay tuned for the 29th episode of the Home Service Toolbox. Podcast dedicated to helping home service providers. Every Wednesday, your hosts, Brian and Olivia, will interview leading experts in both the home service field as well as companies who support the small business owner. Our guests will help you nail down what will and what won't work to grow your business. Whether you're on a job site or taking a break, there's no better time to sharpen your small business skills. And now I can't hear you. Hey, Olivia, how are you today? I'm great, Brian. I'm outside, enjoying the fresh air for the first time in a while, so I can't complain. How are you? I'm doing well. It's kind of crazy in, you know, the whole remote um, uh, gatherings that we have. Everyone's kind of working from home outside. And, you know, um, as we said, we are also joined by Lachelle. Um, how are you two doing today, Lachelle? Pretty good. I wish I had been as smart as Olivia and gone outside. That's a fabulous idea. <laughs> yeah, this weather has been nice uh, lately. Um, you know, um, we'll see what happens in the summer. You know, you never know with North Carolina weather. It can be uh, very nice, comfortable summers, and then it can be brutal uh, uh, within minutes. So, um, but we're not here to talk about the weather. We're we're actually here to talk about uh, the business and life um, related to um, all things uh, with business. And so, Lachelle, we're we're glad to have you. You are the director of the communications at the Better Business Bureau, and um, specifically, uh, you are with um, uh, the Central. And I'm sorry, Central, where is the note? Um, the Central and Northwest part of North Carolina. Yep. Um, so we're glad that you're here. And before um, the BBB um, used to be an investigative reporter um, on uh, WFMY News. Uh, that sounds really interesting. You may have to go into that. And um, uh, But she joined the BBB to continue busting bad guys and warn people about scams. Uh, and also to shine the light on the good businesses that you have in the community. So it sounds like you had an interesting background um, before the BBB. So why don't we actually jump right into that? Like what, what yeah. drew you to the investigating reporting aspect and catching bad guys as you suggested? Well, it, it really was the catching bad guys. I mean, I started out as like your general assignment reporter and, uh, you know, go cover the town hall and the fire and all of that stuff. But my passion was exposing bad guys and, you know, helping consumers if they were scammed by a company. So that's why I went into the investigative reporting. And that's really what drove me the whole time that I was there. Well, wow, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, did you, do you have any like, special bad guys you remember during your time that you know just are like always in the back of your mind and you're really proud that you helped um save the world from them save the world yes actually um we had a gentleman who was doing um mortgages and like reverse mortgages and also telling people he could get them out of bankruptcy and all he was doing was taking their money and not actually providing the service and yeah. so uh, we were able to get him arrested and he actually spent some time in prison. Wow. So wow. yeah, yeah, I felt really good about that. Um, I have another favorite guy. He is an unlicensed HVAC repair person and um, he's unlicensed. He's been sanctioned by the state several times. In fact, they just put him in jail late last year because he was working again. So following people like that, I love to do that and you know, make sure that, I mean, that's kind of one of the things that BBB is helpful with is that you know the state and local agencies like the FTC and the AG, they come to us because they know that we're investigating businesses. And so we get to do the investigation and then hand them the information, which makes their job a lot easier. So uh, then he's, he's a guy that I followed when I was at the station and then I've been following here with him while I'm at BBB, so. Wow. 
That's incredible. <laughs> so what made you pivot from that position to joining the BBB? Well, I felt like BBB was a natural fit because I do still get to talk about the bad guys and help with investigations and do those kinds of things. And, you know, you may or may not know, people can probably tell from TV news, you know, we're out there at 5 a.m. in the snow and <laughs> things like that. And so this was just a chance to continue doing what I love, but have better hours and actually, you know, have a little bit of a life. So I was really thrilled. Uh, the guy who left, I always say the best decision he ever made was to quit so I can have his <laughs> job. <laughs> That's hey, awesome. you, you gotta be honest. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what does a typical bad guy look at the BBB if you don't mind my asking? Because it's not something I'm super familiar with. So um for us, a bad guy is a, a you know a contractor, anybody who takes consumers' money and then doesn't do the job or doesn't finish the job. And you'd be surprised there, unfortunately are a lot of people, I mean, you, we've all heard about the tree guy that comes through the neighborhood after the storm. And he'll say, hey, you know, I'm already in the neighborhood. I can do your trees really cheap. And then what he does is it gets towards the end of the day and he's like, well, I'll tell you what, you finished paying me, but I'll be back tomorrow to finish. And he never shows up. Um, you name it. Those are those are really the when we say a bad guy. That's that's what they're doing. Well, although we have had a contractor that we've followed and worked with the news on who was claiming to be a general contractor and was actually showing fake general contractor licenses from the state. So that's a variation of a bad guy because he needed a license and didn't have one, but claimed he did. Um, and we were able to work with the state and, you know, help them uh, work with him, prosecute him for what he was doing. So, I mean, we're just trying to, a bad guy is anybody that really is going to rip off a consumer in some fashion. Typically, with it, it deals with money for the most part and uh, taking money, not doing the job or not finishing the job. Well, my question uh, is related to gender. So we've been, you know, picking on the bad guy. Are there bad women? I mean, you know, is it is it gender specific? I'm just curious. It is not gender specific. In fact, we had a company here that was offering online courses for medical coding. And she was taking people's money and they get halfway through the courses and then the site would shut down. She wouldn't refund their money. Um, and hers was a, supposed to be a great opportunity because after you went through the medical coding, you were then going to have a job with her or an internship. And so that's why a lot of people were signing up with her, because as we all know, to get a job, you got to have experience, but you got to have a job to get experience. So they were really drawn to her and she was able to have a lot of people sign up and then ended up taking their money. So, yes, there are definitely bad girls out there. Too. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you shedding some light on that because I was feeling a little, you know. You're not being up. ganged up on. Don't worry, Brian. <laughs> not at all. So, um, you know, so pe uh, thinking about like the Better Business Bureau, you know, the, uh, sadly, the only time that um, uh, a lot of people think of them uh, is I'm going to report you to the BBB. Um, and, and so, Kind of, kind of shed some light into um, obviously the Better Business Bureau is way more than just um, uh, the reports and getting reported to and um, a place that, um, well, t t tell us about the place. Sure, yeah, I mean, yeah. Are, so I mean, you're right. People think of us, I'm going to report you to the Better Business Bureau or I'm going to file a complaint. And we love that. We're here for that. Obviously, I love talking about the bad guys that are out there and, and how we can shut them down. But we're also here to talk about the good guys. And again, that was part of the reason what drew me to BBB2 was. And, you know, I finally had a chance to talk about good guys. People might actually smile when they see me coming and <laughs> not assume that it's only bad news. Um, so besides, besides filing a complaint, what consumers do is they come to our website, BBB.org, and they can search a business to see what their letter grade is, to see what their reviews are and also to see if they're accredited with us. And BBB accreditation means that we have screened a business, 
done a background check. If they need a license, we make sure they have a license. Uh, you know, all of that kind of information. And then if they pass all of those tests, then we send their nomination to our board of directors, which is made up of other business owners. And then, you know, they approve or not approve a business. And so the other thing that people look for when they come to our website, besides the letter grade reviews, is the BBB accredited business seal. Oh, and I should have had it. I don't think I can bring it up on my phone very fast. Um, but it's a seal, it's got our torch and underneath it, it says accredited business. And so by working with an accredited business, those businesses, if, if for some reason you had a problem and you filed a complaint, then those businesses actually have to respond to a complaint. You're free to file against any business that you've had a problem with, but that if they're not accredited, sometimes they don't respond. A lot of them do because they care about their letter grade and not responding to a complaint will definitely lower your letter grade. But with a BBB accredited business, you know they're gonna respond. It doesn't always mean that you get the answer you wanted, um, but at least you're going to get a response back from the business and we're there to work with the business and the consumer and, and you know and try to come to some meeting of the middle because i mean sometimes definitely you know even the best company can make a mistake and maybe they're not seeing that they made that mistake and they need to to go ahead and maybe give a refund or come back out one more time to finish something but then you know there's obviously also consumers that have some unrealistic expectations and we're there to help the business work with that consumer as well that's a wealth of knowledge and and i know olivia has some questions to jump into but i i'll actually mention years and years ago um we had someone file a complaint against us the only time it's ever happened um and um i, I know this is the right terminology but we won like we did all the information um and you know um the customer um was in just falsely accusing us um yeah. and so um you know i think you know maybe those thinking that um you know it's always going to be sway to the consumers the, you know the customer's always right yeah. um in this particular case it wasn't um and um we won so i mean i i think um you guys are definitely doing a service that's needed so well, thank you. We try really hard and we try not to let consumers get away with anything. Uh, we got a lot of folks now who are trying to uh, file complaints and say they're COVID-19 related and they're not really. They're just trying to get out of paying a bill or something like that. So, you know, we try to be really mindful and make sure that a complaint that's filed is a real complaint. And that's what's so great and why we always hate it when a business doesn't respond, because we know there's there's two sides to every story. We're only hearing what the consumer says. So we need to know what the business is saying, uh, to, you know, explain. But a lot of times I think businesses are just afraid that again, it's gonna be one-sided, we're gonna take the consumer's side. And that is definitely not what we do at all. Hmm. Well, that's great that you can hear both sides to every story to your point. And that was actually, um, going to tie into my question was obviously we've been dealing with so many changes and so many inconsistencies in the news and people taking advantage of the coronavirus season that we're in. So I was going to ask if you've seen any changes in business strategies or had any cases come up since COVID-19 has really taken flight in the Carolinas or if you've seen any positive effects actually come out of the virus as well, because obviously there are some good things we've been able to see in the news and then also some bad things we've been able to see in the news. So I was wondering if that was applicable to you guys at the BBB as well. We've, we've had a few people, like I said, file the, the COVID-19 related cases and they're not really, honestly, we have not had a consumer file against a business here and it have it be legitimate. So we haven't had any reports of price gouging here. Uh, I think we've been really lucky. And I think that that does say something about the quality of the businesses that we have in our community, which makes us really fortunate. Um, does that answer your question? Yes. We, and we've been trying to gauge, are we getting more complaints? 
or fewer complaints. And it's really running about the same. People are still, you know, coming to us because we are, we, we do still have lives. Um, you know, we are buying stuff online and all of those kinds of things. So there are going to be issues that can come up. And of course, I think one thing that people don't understand is that there are a lot of businesses that you might not think are essential businesses that are out there doing work. Landscapers, for example, I would have never considered that a, you know, an essential business, somebody to come, you know, trim my shrubs, but landscapers do so much more and they're needed, you know, to do water mitigation around a house and, you know, cut that tree before it falls on your house in the next storm. So um, that I really urge people to think about, you know, is my business open um, if you want to do business with them? But also at the same time, you are going to have the ones that are shut down or maybe they don't have all of their employees. And so, you know, be maybe a little extra patient with them. And that's what we're doing too. We've kind of um, lengthened our response time for businesses so that they have a little extra time because we know that, you know, these are very unusual circumstances. <laughs> Unusual is uh, is an understatement, um, but I think you know what's what's happening is businesses are having to pivot. So, um, what are some of the things that you're seeing, just um, with you know the businesses that you're working with and you know accredited businesses and how they're really overcoming this current season uh, that we find ourselves in. Well, I know this isn't necessarily overcoming. We've had a lot of businesses express to us frustration about the small business uh, administration loans. And you know, I'm glad to see that hopefully the house is gonna pass it next, but that we're gonna get more money in the PPP and the EI, forgot the rest of the abbreviation, but the two programs that came out under the CARES Act. So I'm glad to see that money's gonna go into those. We've had businesses that have had a hard time they you know banked with somebody and they're all out of money and then you know some banks say well you already had to be a customer with us so we've been helping businesses kind of connect with all of those resources um you know we do hear reports every now and then of the business that has pivoted and you know they're doing something like making the masks or i think there's a brewery here in town that is making hand sanitizer so, you know, it's great to see businesses that are kind of learning on the fly. And of course, we're doing everything that we can. Uh, we have a, a website called bbbshoplocal.org and it lists, um, it's just for our accredited businesses. And uh, we gave them the opportunity to go online and say, you know, uh, we're a granite showroom and um, we're still open. We're an essential business. People need to, to get work done on their houses. And, you know, our showroom is open by appointment only instead of it just being open. So call us ahead of time if you want to come in. And of course, we'll do the social distancing. And um, so it's giving businesses an opportunity to say, hey, we are still here. We are still open. Um, you know, come do business with us. And this is how we're open. So if you scroll down, we partner with the other BBBs in the state. And so there you can see, um, if you scroll down, we've got the central region and the northwest region. And that's how we broke out the businesses. And so then you can, and you can see their website, their phone number. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So that's one way. The other way, um, and I don't have this, I don't have an example to show you, but something that we're gonna roll out tomorrow is um, on our website, when you search a business, you'll get to see their logo and their competitive business. And we're gonna replace that, uh, their logo if they want us to with a green box that says we're open. So again, letting consumers know we are open and, and willing to help you out during this time. I think that's great. Um, you know, and, and businesses are having to pivot and change, you know. Um, I went to a business yesterday that, that, you know, everything on their website, everything on Google said they were open. And then I went there and their hours were closing early. And, you know, I get it. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't, I understood, but it's like, you've got to be able to communicate. And I think, you know, being able to provide people um, the, the resource to be able to communicate uh, up to date information is going to be really key. Yeah. And when people would send us, so I've been in charge of collecting all of those responses and, you know, some businesses, they might not put anything in for that little section. So I would go to their website and I would see nothing had changed. So I have to reach out and say, okay, you know, is it, are you still open eight to five and I can just walk in whenever I want? Or, you know, what are you doing differently, if anything? And if they're not doing anything differently, we list that too. Um, but 
we just, yeah, we just want consumers to know that the other thing that, uh, you know, a lot of times people don't consider, and we're very conscious of, I mean, most of our businesses that are accredited with us have fewer than 20 employees and a lot of them have one to five. And so we always try to think about the business owner who's also the one that's doing the work. So he's been out all day doing the job. Then he comes home. He needs to send out his invoices so he can get paid. He's got bills to pay. And often marketing and trying to connect with consumers is one of the last things on their mind, unfortunately. And so we think that this is a way, too, that we can sort of ease that burden on some of our businesses. That's wonderful because communication now more than ever is so important and being able to be transparent and providing that service. I mean, we deal with so many small business owners and home service providers on a daily basis who are constantly trying to find new avenues to communicate and connect to their consumer because it's just been so difficult. So the fact that you're able to provide that service is really wonderful. And one of the other things we've been doing, uh, we have uh, two different uh, micro sites or mini sites up to help businesses. And one of them is bbbtrust.info. And on there, we're listing webinars. I've been, we've partnered with you know, chambers and the small business center and a lot of other folks who are offering webinars. And some of the webinars are on things like, you know, how to use text messaging to stay in contact with your customers, uh, how to pivot and giving people ideas and checklists on what you need to be doing right now to make sure that, you know, in a couple of weeks, if this continues to last so long that, you know, that you have uh, the money there. So, um, we're, we're happy to be able to provide that information for folks as well, because uh, we know it's hard. Again, that's the last thing people have time for is to try to go out there and search out one of those webinars to get the information. We've also, anytime, like the last one, um, the, the last webinar that's going to be tomorrow is with businesses who were able to apply for the PPP and the other programs. And so they're going to be on a webinar conference call. Yeah, lessons learned by real local small business owners. So because uh, there is going to be more money and it has not been an easy process. And so we're really excited that we can tell businesses about this webinar so that they can listen in and find out what tips and tricks they need to know once the money is actually back in. Yeah, and interestingly, um, you know, we, we've have found that same thing with, with our business, you know, trying to get the funds. Um, and I was able to tell our team that we got the uh, initial advance yesterday. Um, okay. I have not heard anything. You know, I literally have not been contacted by anyone. You know, people are saying I'm part of all these Facebook groups um, and, you know, hearing about all of these businesses they're doing. And some people are getting credit checks and some people are not. And like, I didn't get my credit checked, but SBA is saying they're not getting, they're not checking credit, but then like people obviously are. So it, it, there is so much information that's out there that's either incorrect or not correct. Um, so I think that webinar is great because I think, you know, actually hearing from people that have either received the money or, or in the process of receiving money can actually just speak to what they've experienced and whether um, it's gonna be repeatable or not for them. Uh, at least there's some information. Yeah, well, and one of the other things, like I just sent out an email today to our accredited businesses. There are other funds that are available, not just with the, the PVP and some other things. So I found, I don't know, six or seven different organizations that say they still have money and they're still taking applications. So we sent that information out to our businesses today in case they wanted to try to you know, tackle that. And of course, um, there's other funds that have already been depleted. And so you know, we're just trying to be a good source of information for businesses. And there's such a need. Um, so I was on a different webinar um, with SBA and Inc. And there was a, a new um, grant that was offered. Um, I think went live on two, sometime this week, or maybe it was last week, I don't remember. And it crashed the entire website and um, <clears throat> no one could access. I mean, it just shows how many people need support um, and funds. And um, so uh, this this is completely off the off the topic of of well, I mean, it's not completely off topic, but you know. So I had someone share um, um, that they were getting frustrated. They were sharing on Facebook that they were getting frustrated by seeing people 
um, complain that bi when businesses are shutting down due to this and they have gift cards um, mm -hmm. and they're unable to get them refunded. And, you know, um, I, I understand from a consumer side, okay, we paid for something we're not going to get. But on the flip side, there's just no compassion to what's happening. Um, you know, so, you know, fortunately, I mean, I'm hoping that there's, you know, less and less businesses that are going to be impacted and having to shut down. But could you speak to just maybe um, some recommendations that you could give to business owners that are having to maybe make some tough choices about maybe pivoting and changing <clears throat> services and solutions and maybe pricing in ways that customers are not used to <clears throat> and could face some backlash or frustration from the consumer side? Sure. We would say just try to be as transparent as possible and explain why you're making the decision. You know, if you are you know, not able to honor gift cards anymore or whatever the explanation, maybe you've been working on a kitchen project and now, you know, uh, you can't get the supplies because they're not out there. Uh, you can't get workers because, it, you know, we're doing the social distancing. And um, so just, I think, being as transparent as possible, don't be afraid to tell consumers the truth. That'll shut down anybody um, faster than anything. You know, when I was doing investigative reporting and you approach somebody and you're like, hey, X, Y, and Z happened. And they're like, you know what? We made a mistake and we are sorry. And that, that shuts people down faster than anything. And I, businesses, I would say, don't be afraid to, if you do end up making a mistake, don't be afraid to say, we made a mistake, we're sorry. Consumers are very forgiving when you do that kind of thing, for the most part. Every now and then you get one that's not, but, uh, but no. But, but again, just be honest with people and tell them what's going on in your business. And hopefully that will help them feel compassion. Because I mean, of course, Unfortunately, we're all a little self-centered and we're all only thinking about ourselves and, hey, I spent 50 bucks now and I can't go eat at that restaurant. And, um, you know, but think about the restaurant. I mean, they're, they could lose their entire livelihoods uh, for opening the restaurant and being the restaurant owner. And then you've got all the people that they employed. So the more that we can keep small businesses open during this, the better. So, again, just be transparent, be honest, over communicate, uh, you know, get something put up on your website or put it on social media about about what's going on. And if you do get reviews, this is one thing because people may be filing reviews because they're unhappy. Uh, research shows that consumers do read the responses and a good business response can negate what that consumer is saying. And, you know, we always tell businesses, it is so personal. You get a complaint and you read it and you're like, how dare they? And you start typing really fast. And then, you know, they spit back the response and it's like, oh, I wish they would have just thought for a second. You know, maybe I shouldn't have said it quite that way. So, you know, consumers really do read those responses and it shows if the consumer, the one that's reading the reviews, if they ended up having uh, a problem, it shows how the business is going to respond to them as well. And consumers think about that. Do you have any tips for business owners who might be getting those bad reviews and are feeling the heat of their emotions right now and want to take it out and be a keyboard warrior and they really shouldn't? <laughs> Step away from the keyboard. <laughs> Read it and process it. Think about it but don't respond automatically. Get somebody else to read your response to see if it's measured, you know, and make sure you state facts. And unfortunately, that's one of the things that consumers often don't do is they embellish. Uh, they want to show how frustrated they are. And they may use some words that maybe aren't exactly true or are very inflammatory. And so we always encourage businesses to just stick to the facts. Don't do name calling. I don't care what they called you. Uh, don't name call them. And uh, by stating the facts, consumers can read that and they can understand. I mean, you don't have to say this business or this consumer is lying and here's why I did X, Y, and Z. And, you know, just take out the, the consumer's lying and say, you know, we're sorry that you're unhappy with the service. Uh, here's what transpired. Um, and again, if you made a mistake, admit it and say, we are so sorry. And uh, here's what we're going to do to rectify the situation. And, and again, consumers read that and they love to see that kind of stuff. 
apologizing is like, I, I don't know, that's like my pet peeve. And so many people don't know how to apologize or maybe they've been ge- trained to, if they apologize, they're admitting guilt. Um, but like cust- bad customer service and then when someone doesn't just admit, like if someone can just admit it for me, it just sets my, you know, everything ar- uh, better for me. And I think, I, I'm glad that you're saying all this because, you know, because we're a marketing company and we deal with all this digital stuff and we, you know, clients are, you know, ha- having Facebooks and Instagrams and Twitters and, you know, YouTubes and Google my business and, you know, EVP and all these other things. And they're like, I just don't want it out there because then people, you know, you're going to have trolls and all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, I get it. But, you know, um, you can't get around it. Like if you want to do business in today in 2020, this is the livelihood that we are in. Uh, we are in the world of people complaining and being way meaner online than they would ever be in person. Yeah. And, um, uh, and say things they would never say in person. Um, but you know, that's just reality. And so I think that the thing that I give advice on is, you know, when you get a bad review, that is, um, that is unfair, just completely unfair. The best thing you can do is stuff it with good reviews, like yes. push the bad review down with good reviews because there's plenty of people, you know, it's, it's the good people that don't ever leave good reviews. <laughs> um, yeah. it's always the bad people. Um, and I think you're right. People see through, um, especially if you are responding in a measured way, as you suggested, and the person that has leaving the review is not measured. Um, I think it speaks volumes to those kinds of responses. So, yeah. And that's why we're really glad, like with our complaints, when consumers file a complaint, um, for the most part, you can always read the business's response. So it's, it's just like with reviews and, uh, you would be really surprised like when I'm talking to consumers and I'm like, well, they had these uh, complaints filed, but here were the circumstances. And they're like, oh, that, you know, I I totally, that I'm not worried about any of that. So being able to read the circumstances and read what the business, how the business responds really does help. That's awesome. Well, after hearing you talk about BBB accreditation, it kind of makes me think of a little verification on social media like Twitter or Instagram, not to make parallels, but what can you tell our business owners um, who are listening and want to be accredited by the BBB but might not have their um, accreditation yet? How can they apply? Well, definitely. We've got a link at the very top of our website and it says join apply. And so you can go up there and you can fill out your information and we'll contact you or the information for our business development folks are is on our website so people can call them directly or you know shoot us an email um, all of our contact information is online too and so you know let us know that you're interested and then we start the application process and you know we go through and we do our check um, yep there it is and just you know fill out some information and this web page is really great because it does have you know information from other businesses that are accredited and how it has helped them uh, you know the best thing you I mean you alluded to it it's like you know verified by instagram or twitter and that's what the, the accredited business seal is it's a trust mark it shows consumers that that you have been ver- vetted and verified by somebody else we keep an eye on them every year they come up for reaccreditation and so you know again we're checking to make sure they have a license have they gotten in trouble in the past year and you know businesses tell us that you know they know that consumers are asking they know that consumers are checking their profile uh, we have information from surveys. Yeah, there you go. That's the accredited business deal. Uh, and you know, consumers say that, you know, 70% of consumers, seven out of 10 say that they want to work with accredited businesses. So if they have the choice between an accredited business with an A plus and a non-accredited business with an A plus, they're going to pick that accredited business. So, and plus then you get visibility because you're on our website and people are coming there. Uh, you know, we've had more than a million people visit just our local portion of the website to search for businesses or, you know, a particular, they may search for a particular business to see what their score is and if they're accredited or they may be just looking for painters in general and then they can get a, a whole list of accredited businesses. 
So it's, it's super easy to apply. You just fill out the process and then, or the application uh, or the little questionnaire, I guess it really is. And then, you know, one of us, somebody from the business development team will contact them and, you know, get all of their information and make sure it's up to date and then send it on. Well, um, before we get into, you know, um, or, or the reality is we are in the, in the coronavirus season, but <clears throat> pre-corona, um, you know, what were some of the biggest challenges that you saw business owners experienced um, during just being a business owner? We get a lot of requests for help with marketing. As you guys know, <laughs> every small business or big business even needs marketing, but they're not sure how to go about it. And there's so much information out there about what to do, what not to do, which social media platform should you be on, how should you post, uh, should you run ads, if so where, what's a good price. So we had business, a lot of business owners asking about that kind of information. Um, we did a survey and I'm trying to think what the top three things were that they wanted to know, what other information they wanted, like webinars and stuff on. Marketing was one of them. They actually, they do want webinars on ethics as well. And of course, ethics is something that uh, is part of you. You have to be an ethical business to be an accredited business with BBB. And so you know, we're really glad to hear that businesses are wanting to know more about ethics. How do we show our ethics to consumer? And you know, that's a really tricky thing because not a lot of us sit around and go, hmm, what are my ethics, especially a small business? You know, they may not have an employee handbook because they only have one or two employees and they can, you know, express to that employee verbally, here are my ethics, here's what we do. Um, so you're having some ethics training and, you know, just information on how to express their ethics to consumers. That's something that people are asking us about. And then also, how do we find good workers? Uh, that's the, you know, a, an ongoing challenge, but they're asking questions like that. You know, how do we find and keep good employees? And then they also want to know, how do we respond to customer reviews? How do we get more customer reviews? Uh, and that's one of the good things about BBB is we obviously we have the reviews and we have links that accredited businesses can use to send to their consumers. We give them tips on all the different ways to ask for a review, when to ask for the review, uh, and how to get the link to their consumers. So that's interesting. So one of the questions as a follow-up is this, you know, with all the different social media platforms, obviously um, Google reviews uh, and Yelp are probably the two biggest, you know, review platforms. Um, when, I, I, sadly, I don't think that most people think about the BBB when they go think of a, a, a review. So um, how can, um, you know, because Google, with, with Google reviews is so important with SEO and marketing and, you know, that's what the world that we live in. Um, and, and so how do you help encourage like the balance between all of those? Um, because, you know, obviously Google dominates Google and the search um, <laughs> yeah. and Yelp uh, really dominates the restaurant world and obviously yeah. they touch every industry. Um, so just curious your, your thoughts on how you balance all that. Well, one, I would say in terms of reviews, people may go to Google first, maybe to check a review, but we have um, surveys that show that 70% of consumers do come to BBB first when they want to check out the reputation of a business. And so they are thinking complaints, you know, are they accredited? And then kind of, oh yeah, there are reviews. So uh, we're proud to say, you know, that 70% of consumers turn to us first when they want to check out the reputation of a business. And if you can, in some senses, I wonder if this is like the, uh, the shotgun approach that you want to use is if you can send a couple links to consumers to say, you know, review me here and give them the actual links. Um, you know, you might mention, hey, and you can cop, you know, copy the review you put on Google and then go over to BBB and paste it there as well. I mean, it, it is tough um, to try to figure out what you want to do. But I think one of the things, and you guys can talk about this, is helping a business figure out where their consumer is. Uh, you know, if it's a restaurant, yep, you definitely want to have good reviews on Yelp for sure. Um, but 
that is that is a challenge. And it's even a challenge for us when we're trying to reach businesses and consumers. What do we pick? Where do we put our efforts? And so I think you have to try a couple different things and see, you know, which one is working. But we definitely know that, you know, that consumers are coming to BBB to check out a business. So of course, I'm going to say, make sure that you are, um, you know, getting the, the BBB reviews out there too. But you're right. I mean, Google is a powerhouse and SEO and all of that stuff. So, and of course, you know, it shows up with their stars when you do a search. So, you know. Wow. I mean, reviews, you don't think about the impact reviews really have until you're sitting there staring at all those positive reviews and then you see that one negative review. So it really kind of puts it all into perspective, I guess. Um, a question a little bit more off topic and a little bit more about you is, What's the best thing about working for the BBB and why do you love your job? Hmm, if I had to pick one. I mean, especially right now, this is pretty top of mind for me, but it is really important for me to, to help our businesses get the information that they need. And so I'm really glad that I'm in the position where I can go out and, you know, Bear it through all of that information and kind of, you know, get it down into a manageable list um, and send people to the right places to get that information. Because, I mean, local businesses, small businesses, they are the fabric of our community. And we want to make sure that they're around once the coronavirus is gone. So, you know, as much information, as much help as I can give a business, that's been really important to me in, in the last month, more so than um you know trying to bust the bad guy although you know we're telling businesses and consumers about all of the scams that are out there with you know i if i had to i think they're probably equal i mean um I, I like being able to come to work and to be able to do both of those things and and also then to talk about our great accredited businesses and you know give them kudos when they do something really good and um, handle a complaint really well or you know something along those lines That's great. So um, uh, I definitely want to have you uh, tell us about some of the resources that you mentioned. But um, last question before we jump into kind of the resources, um, you know, with with the COVID-19 and, you know, there's lots of challenges. But what would be a, a piece of advice that you could give uh, tangible piece of advice that someone is listening to our um, podcast or watching right now uh, that they could take action now? Um, and uh, really just be encouraged to, to get through this season. Two things I would say is one, if you are thinking that you are going to need some emergency funds, go ahead and apply now. Go back to your bank and say, I know there's money coming. What can I do to make sure I'm in the queue? And apply as, at as many different places as you can. But go ahead and get that in the works so that when the money is back, um, you have a good chance at it. And then I would also just say, you know, communicate with your customers, whether it's on Facebook, if you have the ability to add something to your website, let them know how you're operating. If you're a clothes business, let them know what your process is going to be once you reopen. And there's a uh, my husband needs a massage. And so we're trying to think, gosh, can we book that now? What do we need to do? Is it going to be really full? So a business that can say, you know, we are going to be backlogged, but here's our plan for dealing with that black backlog when we open back up. Again, communicating with, with customers and potential customers, the more you can do that, I, I think you'll be better off on the other side of, of COVID-19. Well, that's great. So speaking of some of the resources, you know, I can share my screen um, and I know you gave us some links uh, for for things to look at. Um, so just talk a little bit about um, some of the resources that you guys are offering. Um, I know we talked a little bit about webinars earlier, but, you know, what are some of the things that people can go to your website and just get some some free assistance right now? Sure. So we do have this uh, page for the recorded webinar or for webinars, and we have some of the recorded ones too. We have a YouTube channel that has a lot of other ones on there, and then um, we have the webinars that are coming up. But um, so that's bbbtrust.info. If you go to bbbtrust.org, on that page we have resources broken out by county. Um, oh, don't tell me it's not working. Mm. bbtrust.org. I think I went there earlier. Um, yeah, and redirected. There we go. Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> Trying to keep all these websites up to date and make sure they're all working. You guys know that's a challenge. So if you scroll down, you can see um, we've got the county resources broken out for the 19 counties. Um, and it's links to the Small Business Center, to any other information that they may have in their county. Uh, like. Um, for Scythe County's got their COVID-19 response fund. So just trying to link cons or businesses to as many different places where they can get help as possible. Um, and so that's by each county. And then we also have a tab for state resources uh, where you can get information that you might need for the state. Uh, then again, there's the link for the webinars. Um, and then let's see if we scroll down and then financial resources. Now I've been having a problem with this link, so we'll see what happens. Um, the Small Business Network has a list of great other financial resources aside from the ones that I sent out to our businesses today. So that's on there. Business resources is just more information, you know, how do you, in the beginning we had things like templates for um, emails on how to respond to business or consumers if you were going to be closed. So there's a lot of, and then what scams to look out for as a, as a business, because right now you know, scammers are out there and you know, they're trying to take advantage of not just consumers, but businesses. And then we have tips and alerts um, and apply for accreditation. You could certainly go to that page if you wanted to apply. So um, just trying to be a, a one-stop source for businesses. And that's at bbbtrust.org. Well, that's great. Yeah. I really appreciate uh, you sharing all those resources. Uh, you know, just for our listeners, I think um, just being able to find something that's accurate, um, because you know the problem with Google right now is is things are changing so quickly that um, uh, you know you can't necessarily just trust an immediate piece of information that you've gotten. So it's good to know that people like you are scouring through that resource to make sure that this is actually legitimate and something that people can you know. Uh, pull from. Well, and I'm trying to find ones too that are easy explanations because some of the articles and stuff you read and you're like, I, I cannot understand what they're saying at all. Um, but you know, there's, some, there's some good resources here. The Winston-Salem um, Chamber has been great. They do a daily update and explain things really well and break it down really so easily. So I link to a lot of their stuff. So it, it's great to have partners like Chambers and the Small Business Centers to help us. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Lachelle. We've really appreciated you having joining us on the podcast and all of the awesome nuggets of wisdom you've had to give us. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Well, on next week's episode, we're going to have um, someone from Home Advisor, uh, and she's going to be speaking all about um, their tool and. Um, you know, Home Advisor is a great place to understand, you know, uh, resources and, and who to trust uh, when you're getting work done at your home. So we're excited to have um, Lexi from Home Advisor um, on our show next week. If you guys like what we have to share every week, please give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, leave us a review and all that jazz. It means the world to us. And um, until next time, we'll see you next week, guys. Break time's over. Break time's but over. Thanks for listening, thanks to, the for home listening to the Home Service Toolbox. Keep your marketing toolbox up to date by subscribing to our podcast. We'll be here every Wednesday hammering out solutions to help your business.